Hey guys, what's up? It's Charlie here, and today we're going to be looking at what happened to the first monkey in space. But before we launch off, why not subscribe and press the notification bell too. Ham the space chimpanzee was born in 1957 in the French Cameroons. He was in the wild having a nice, natural chimpanzee life. But sadly at a very young age he was captured by animal trappers in Cameroon. He was then sent to the rare bird farm in Miami, Florida, USA. It only took a few months and he was purchased by the US Air Force. He was nicknamed Subject 65 aka HAM by the US Air Force. HAM being an acronym for the Holloman Aerospace Medical Center. That's because in 1959 he was brought to the Holloman Air Force Base. He was actually one of 40 chimpanzees who had been captured and sold to the US Air Force. These 40 chimps were unwittingly enrolled in what was known as the School for Space Chimps. And if this school had teachers pets, then HAM was definitely that. Ham was the best chimp in the entire class. He seemed to be much more fit and much more intelligent than all the other chimps. He was comfortable being strapped into his container. According to his trainer and handler Edward Dittmer, he was wonderful. In a very short space of time, he learned how to push levers and other things. His trainer Edward said he was more like a little kid than a chimp as he was so smart. He was also known as Chop Chop Chang, but by 1959 this secret space chimp project had been whittled down to two chimpanzees. It was there that Ham had to do various tests. He did time tasks in response to electric lights and sounds. For example, he was taught to push a lever within 5 seconds of seeing a flashing blue light. If he failed this task, then he would get an electric shock. But if he got this task right, then he would be given a banana. The real amazing part about Ham's mission was that he was not just simply a passenger going up to space. Instead, he'd actually be manning the spacecraft himself. Ham was also subject to nearly 5 minutes of zero gravity, an experience he did not like. But on the 31st of January 1961, it was Ham's big day. He got dressed in a diaper, waterproof pants and a spacesuit. He was also fitted with sensors to monitor his heart rate, breathing and body temperature. He was then put inside a capsule which was then put inside a Mercury Redstone 2 rocket. The rocket, abbreviated as MR2, was launched from Cape Canaveral, Florida. Then in the early hours of January 31st, it launched. At first, Ham's capsule did suffer a partial loss of pressure. But thankfully Ham's spacesuit prevented him from suffering any harm. Ham was able to push the lever at the sign of the blue flashing light just as he did on Earth. Ham then went into orbit and outer space. And when he had to come down the blue light flashed and he pulled the lever. Ham's capsule then splashed down into the Atlantic Ocean. And then within a few hours his capsule was found again by a rescue ship. Amazingly Ham suffered no physical injuries except a bruised nose. And his flight only lasted 16 minutes and 39 seconds. There was actually a video recording Ham during his 16 minute flight. And according to one of the NASA scientists, he said he'd never seen such terror on a chimp's face. This means Ham must have been absolutely petrified and confused when this was going on. But despite this, he was still able to pull the lever and go back to Earth. If he failed to do this, he would have been stuck in space and would have passed away there. It was actually only after the flight that Ham got his name, Ham. That's because the US Air Force feared it would be bad PR if a named chimp passed away in space. That's why he was only called number 65 before his flight. But what happened to the first hominid in space? The first man in space got a motorcade going along the streets of Moscow to the Kremlin. And Neil Armstrong was also given many medals, awards and even a parade. But sadly the first primate in space got none of that. After his flight he lived all alone for 17 years. He lived a lonely life in the National Zoo in Washington DC. And in 1983 Ham sadly passed away. His body was then handed over to the Armed Forces Institute of Pathology. They were going to have him stuffed and put on display at the Smithsonian Museum. But after a very negative public reaction this plan was abandoned. Instead, they removed Ham's bones and buried his remains at the International Space Hall of Fame. You can actually see Ham's grave in New Mexico at the International Space Hall of Fame today. And you can see Ham's skeleton in the National Museum of Health and Medicine. So sadly, despite being a space hero, Ham lived a lonely life after the mission. But whatever happened to the other chimp that passed the program with Ham? This chimp was nicknamed Minnie and she never actually went into space. She was only actually going to be used if something went wrong with Ham, which it didn't. 
Instead, Minnie went on to become part of the Air Force Chimpanzee Breeding Program. She produced nine children, and she was also the last surviving Astro Chimpanzee. She died at the ripe old age of 41 on March 14th, 1998. So, Ham is a space hero and luckily he did survive space. But it sure is sad he was captured by animal trappers in his native Cameroon. And then for 17 years he had to live a lonely life in the National Zoo. I think at the very least they could have released him back into the wild. The 9 most inspiring animal rescues. Coming up first we have Iris the Pitbull. We often think of Pitbulls as very dangerous breeds of dogs. But in some ways this is actually a myth. Pitbulls can be bred to be very very dangerous. However, if they're raised correctly, they can be incredibly well behaved. Well, one day a few people realised there seemed to be a dog crawling around in a bunch of bushes. They didn't want to go too near the dog in case it was rabid or dangerous. But the dog looked very weak, as if it hadn't eaten in a long time. And for whatever reason, it would not leave the bushes. The dog would only come out at night for food, and no one could get it to leave the bushes. That's when one concerned bystander phoned up a group named Hope for Paws. This organization helps dogs in need. Amazingly at night, they came to check out the scene. They went to the bushes and realized why this pit bull never left. It's because this pit bull all alone was looking after babies. That's right, this pit bull they later named Iris had two babies with her. The reason why Iris was so underfed was because she was giving all the food she gathered to her kids. This just goes to show mothers are not only selfless when they're humans, dog mothers are just as loving. Amazingly, the group did get her to leave her habitat and come somewhere much, much nicer. Now she and her children are looked after by many humans. She is given many meals and people play and exercise with her every day. Iris is now enjoying the life every dog deserves. But it's so sad she had to starve herself looking after her kids before she was found. Next up is Alaska the Polar Bear. When we think of animals being rescued, we often picture a cat up a tree. Well, this is not one of those stories. Instead, this story is about the rescue of an animal many people see as a predator. That is, a polar bear. Sadly, Alaska was not floating on a glacier somewhere. Instead, it was performing with a zoo named Suarez Brothers. This is a circus located in Mexico. One day, a circus attendee realized Alaska was very, very skinny and lethargic. Not only that, Alaska had not been cleaned and was filthy. Polar bears usually have white coats, but Alaska's was more of a dark grey colour. Luckily, an environmental activist did some research and found out more about Alaska. She found Alaska was 20 years old and was living in a cage which was never cleaned. Not only that, Alaska had to sit in this cage in 113 degree temperature all day. Luckily, the activist complained to the authorities and Alaska was taken away from the circus. Some vets actually thought Alaska may not make it and might pass away. But thankfully she was able to be put in a more suitable climate and was nursed back to health. Luckily Alaska's memory of being in a dirty, boiling hot cage is now a thing of the past. Today Alaska's in their natural climate. But it sure is sad Alaska spent around 10 years in such bad conditions. Next up is Peronita the Donkey. In India, donkeys are a very popular animal to carry loads. They're loaded up with things and are used as a means of transportation. Many owners take good care of their donkeys, but sadly some do not. One day a couple found a donkey lying in the middle of the road. They pulled over and realized that this donkey had a broken leg. The donkey had been carrying such heavy loads, its legs had actually broken. And instead of helping it, the owners simply abandoned it, as they saw the donkey as useless. Not only that, her nose had been cut with a knife. That's because some people think that it makes animals able to take in more air so their lungs can work harder. But this is a total myth and only causes the donkey a lot of pain. Luckily, the couple alerted a group named Animal Rahat. This is a group which helps animals in India. The staffers were able to take the donkey to a retirement home and name it. Now, Peronita has an awesome name and a great home. She is fed very well and doesn't have to carry anything. And amazingly, vets were able to fix her leg as well. It is sad how animals are mistreated and used as some kind of vehicle in some countries. But thankfully, there are always good people and groups out there to help out these animals. Next up is Thorn the Squirrel. 
One day, some people were walking down their street when they heard what they thought was an unusual bird call. They thought it was some rare bird, so they looked up into the trees. But when they looked up into the tree, that's when they saw a baby squirrel hanging from a branch. That's right, this baby squirrel had been born and somehow got away. For some reason, the mother must have made their nest up in a tree. This newly born baby squirrel was then hanging from a branch after nearly falling. Obviously, baby squirrels do not have the agility adult ones do. So if this one fell from the tree, then it would be no more. Luckily, the people were able to contact a group of wildlife enthusiasts. These people were able to get to the tree and use a ladder to rescue this squirrel. They named the baby squirrel Thorn before releasing it. So next time you hear what you think may be an unusual bird call, look up into the tree and see. You never know, you may get the chance to save a baby squirrel. Next up is Benny the Horse. In 2014, a shocking photo went viral online. It showed a horse lying in the middle of a field, starving. The image is incredibly shocking, and it was released by a wildlife group. This group is called The Last Stop Horse Rescue. Amazingly, they came across this horse after somebody phoned in. A person had been hiking and saw this horse collapsed in the field. Sadly, this horse had been abandoned in this field with no food. It was starving, but the great people from Last Stop were able to come down and save this horse. Vets said that if they hadn't have intervened, this horse would have passed away within a day. But thankfully this horse, later named Benny, was nursed back to health. It sure is sad how some people can discard animals so easily. But at the same time it shows that just a few good apples can really save the day. Because the black horse was laying down, the person who first saw it actually thought they were seeing a trash bag at first. Luckily they investigated further and found that was not the case. But it just goes to show, if you think something's up with an animal, then call a wildlife group. You never know, you could be saving an animal's life with just one phone call. Next up is Toothless the Sheepdog. One morning, just as he did every day, a man named Cody Leiterheimer was working in his factory. That was when, all of a sudden, something wandered into the factory. It was a weak, starving, toothless dog covered in fleas. The dog also had cataracts in its eyes and ulcers and fistulas in its mouth. The dog was very elderly and in incredibly bad shape. The factory worker Cody actually thought the dog was coming in because it was passing away. But thankfully Cody decided to step up to the plate and save Toothless. That's right, he named the sheepdog Toothless as it had no teeth. Within a few months, he was able to nurse Toothless back to health. Cody was also able to remove all of the fleas from him. And he was even taken to the vet and his cataracts and ulcers were healed. His fistulas were also removed from his mouth. But he made an even more sad discovery, and that's that Toothless was deaf. But despite this, Toothless now lives a fantastic life. He went from an abandoned sheepdog to luxury living. He now spends his days with Cody's wife, Cassie. Cassie is a stay-at-home mom who looks after Toothless all day. It's so nice that Toothless now gets to have naps, play, and also eat tons of food. And I have to give Cody and his wife a round of applause for saving this poor dog's life. Next up is Teller the Pigeon. One day a businessman was walking on a busy New York street. That was when he noticed something everyone else was just ignoring and walking past. There was a pigeon hopping around on the road unable to fly. Most people walking around were just getting to work and did not care about this pigeon. In fact, some people in cities see pigeons as very annoying. But this man rushed over and grabbed the pigeon. He then took the pigeon he named Teller to a wildlife rehabilitation center. It was there that Teller was placed in a home with a massive outdoor aviary. Sadly, Teller was not able to fly again. However, Teller was able to get off the ground and to walk around normally. That's a lot better than what would have happened to Teller before, as he was walking around in the middle of the road. Around 50 pigeons are actually hit by cars in New York every month. But luckily this person saved Teller from this fate and was able to rescue him. It's likely that Teller flew into the window of a skyscraper, kind of like how you see in movies. That's the reason why his wing was broken and he was unable to fly. But luckily he now lives in an amazing wildlife center and is cared for around the clock. Next up we have Timber the Pitbull. That's right, here's one more inspiring Pitbull story. One day somebody saw this dog on the side of a road, so they decided to pull over. That's when they made a stunning discovery. They realized that this Pitbull had a bullet wound in its head. Now you may wonder how on earth would this Pitbull survive? 
Well, it was taken to a vet and they found out the bullet thankfully just missed its brain. The vet was able to heal this dog and they named it Timber. Despite having such a tough life, Timber was nursed back to health and was never aggressive. Despite the stereotypes around pit bulls, Timber smiles all the time. He never gets angry and never barks, let alone bites. And now Timber's head wound is completely mended and he lives a happy and normal life. And finally on the list of inspiring animal stories, we have Larry the Lobster. When we think of animal rescue stories, we don't often consider lobsters. Well, that changed one day when someone visited a restaurant in Virginia Beach, Virginia. They realized the lobster had an arcade style crane game machine. But instead of getting a stuffed toy, you were able to pick out a lobster. This is very sad and actually broke a few rules. The lobster, which was later named Larry, had not been fed for three weeks. Also, its claws were bound very tightly with rubber bands. A concerned customer and employee contacted the authorities. And luckily, authorities came and cut the rubber bands off the lobster. The lobster, named Larry after the SpongeBob character, was then released back into the ocean. And seeing as lobsters can live for around 55 years, chances are Larry's still out there somewhere in the ocean. And a dog who gave birth to a rare green puppy. The dog in this photo is called Rio, and she is a golden retriever. Recently, Rio gave birth to a litter of puppies. They all looked exactly how you'd imagine a baby golden retriever to look like. That is, except one of her puppies, which stood out from the rest of the litter. Rio and her owner, Louise Sutherland, live in Goldspy, Scotland. And Louise was absolutely amazed when her golden retriever gave birth to nine puppies. But one thing that actually made her concerned as well as surprised was one of the puppies was green. She said it was all hands on deck when the puppies began to be delivered. But she soon realized one of the puppies had green fur and she couldn't believe her eyes. Louise named this puppy Forest, as it's green. She posted a photo of her dog and its new green puppy, and it quickly went viral. However, many people were saying that it was totally faked. After all, it's not every day you see a green dog. However, some saw the image and correctly believed it, as it is real. They said to Louise they were very envious of her for having a green puppy as they wanted one themselves. But there are only three of these green puppies in the world ever to be born. If you think having a cute dog gets you a lot of attention, just wait until that dog is green. But you're probably shouting one thing at the screen right now. Charlie, why is it green? Did this dog get busy with an alien or something? Well, no, there's actually a pretty explainable science behind why this dog came out green. Basically, it's a rare phenomena where unborn puppies come into contact with Belivarin. Belivarin is a green pigment found in dog's bile inside its bodies. You can actually see this pigment when your dog gets a bruise. If your dog gets a bruise, chances are it will turn green. Well, this is the green Belivarin pigment inside the dog's body. Sometimes it can dye a dog's puppy's fur green in the womb. The pigment will also mix with the mother dog's amniotic fluids. This creates a green coloring and can stain some of their litter green. But amazingly, out of the nine dogs that were given birth to that day, only one turned out green. Now, sadly, these pups do not stay green into adulthood. Eventually, this color does actually fade in a few months. That's because it literally is like a fabric or food dye. Eventually, it wears away. So that's why you've never seen a fully grown green golden retriever. But then again, this phenomena has only been recorded happening three times ever, so it's very rare. But many people who clicked share didn't realize there's actually a very sad story behind this viral photo. You see, Rio the golden retriever gave birth to nine puppies that day. But very sadly, one of those nine puppies passed away shortly after being born. However, the owner, Luis, says the rest of the litter are doing just fine. And of course, that includes Forrest the green puppy. So there you go, guys. Some things aren't too good to be true and are actually real. I'm kind of skeptical when it comes to internet images, and I really thought this was totally fake. But these photos are real, and it actually is something that can happen. But are there any other rare phenomena that can happen with dogs? Well, recently a two-month-old puppy named Enzo went viral. This was another golden retriever that had something special about it. You see, Enzo was born with a very rare condition, which means he has a cute mark on his face. He is actually unique, meaning no other golden retriever in the world looks anything like him. As you can see, his face has a rare pigmentation named somatic cell mutation. 
Many people don't realize this, but in the womb, golden retrievers actually have a black base coat. But there's a modifier gene that turns them a golden color before they're born. Every golden retriever has this modifier, but Enzo stumbled a bit in his DNA. That's why one part of his face is black while the rest is golden. But it made Enzo look incredibly rare and cute for his breed. And if you're more into pit bulls than golden retrievers, then check out this dog named Titus. Titus is so rare he's thought to be the only pit bull in the world that looks like this. Despite being a pit bull, Titus is very well trained and is not aggressive at all. He was born in Albania and as you can see he looks kind of like a cheetah. And experts say Titus could actually sell for around $100,000. And that's all down to his markings, as they're so rare and cool looking. Let's be honest, who wouldn't want their very own cheetah pit bull? What happened to the first dog in space? The dog at the center of this story is a female dog named Laika. Laika was born in 1954 on the 3rd of November in the Soviet Union. She was born in Moscow, USSR, which is now Moscow, Russia. Laika was actually what's known as a street dog. This is a dog which is kind of wild and out on the streets. So, she had no home, but in 1955, she was taken by a Soviet space program engineer. She was taken by this man and selected to be on the Soviet spacecraft Sputnik 2. The mission of Sputnik 2 was to triumph their previous launch of Sputnik 1. They wanted to amaze the world with the power of the Soviet Union. Remember, at this time, the USSR and USA were at war. This was known as the Cold War, and during the Cold War was what was known as the Space Race. This was basically a race as to who could do space exploration better, the USA or the USSR. Well, for testing, Soviet officials decided to do something with Sputnik 2. They wanted to put a dog into the rocket to see how long dogs could survive in zero gravity. Sputnik 2 also had instruments for measuring solar interradiance and cosmic rays. It also had a life support machine with an oxygen generator. And inside it was a fan which would activate whenever the cabin got over 15 degrees centigrade. This fan was added to make sure the dog would always be cool and would survive for a long time. Now, the mission was amazing as it was launching the first living thing into orbit. But the Soviets did not sugarcoat what was going to happen. They said Laker was not going to return alive. This caused outrage around the world that they would be sacrificing a dog. But despite the bad PR, the mission went ahead. As part of Laker's training, she did some suborbital flights. This is kind of like what astronauts do today before going out into space. It's done in a controlled, zero-gravity environment. And really, it's done in a zero-gravity room. It's not done in a spaceship. Also, to help Laker adapt to Sputnik 2, she was kept in a smaller cage for 20 days before the mission. This caused Laker's blood pressure to double. And she also began to get quite ill and restless. Laker was also trained to eat a high nutrition gel that would be in her space food. One day before the launch, one of the engineers for the Soviet space program took Laker home to play with his kids. The man was named Dr. Vladimir Yadovsky. He later wrote in his novel that Laker was very quiet and charming. He said he took her home to play with his kids to do something nice for Laker. He knew she had little time left to live and wanted her to have a nice final day on Earth. But he kind of felt too bad for Laker as she was still put into the rocket by him. Then, on the 3rd of November 1957, Sputnik 2 launched. Liftoff occurred at 5.30 a.m. Moscow time. At first it was normal and Laker got into outer space. The rocket was supposed to split into two, but there was an error and part of it did not separate. This caused their thermal control system to malfunction. Remember how I told you about the fan and the cooling system they put in before? Yeah, that stopped working and Laker began to overheat. The cabin was not supposed to get above 15 degrees centigrade, but instead it got up to 40 degrees centigrade. Sadly, Laker had nowhere to go and could do nothing but wait until she passed away. Within a few minutes, Laker did overheat and passed away. This is a very sad way to go. She was actually supposed to be poisoned by a poisoned food package the scientists had put in the rocket. But instead, sadly from this malfunction, Laker passed away from overheating. For about five months, Sputnik 2 and Laker's body revolved around Earth. It floated in space and orbited the Earth 2,570 times. Then, 162 days after the launch, Sputnik 2 re-entered the Earth's atmosphere. However, in re-entry to the Earth's atmosphere, Sputnik 2 burnt up. And of course, so did Laker's remains. At first, the Soviet Union said that Laker had passed away painlessly in orbit. And they said it happened about a week after blastoff. 
but that was actually not the case. Obviously, after the blast off, it took Laker just a few hours to pass away. And sadly, it likely was not painless at all. The USSR said this so they wouldn't get bad publicity, and also so that they looked better in the space race. But many years later in 2002, the real truth about what happened was revealed. Laker now has a big legacy in Russia and around the world. In Moscow, there's a statue devoted to Laker, and it also brought up many ethical questions about the USA and USSR using animals for the space race. And after Laker, all future space missions carrying dogs were designed to be recovered. So that was the sad story of Laker in space. If you guys want some more amazing videos, then check out my second channel. There'll be a link to that on screen in a moment. But as always, thanks for watching. Check out some more videos on screen right now. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and if you haven't already, what are you waiting for? Subscribe to Top 10s.